The most important thing that I hope that you take away from this course is how to start a Cubase project properly and what constitutes a Cubase project. Because when you're in Cubase, what you're actually working on is not a song or a tune or anything like that. What you're working on is a project. And a project is considered a collection of different media. And it's very, very different from a word processing program or an email program in that when you're working with a DAW program like Cubase, it's actually generating a whole bunch of different files on your computer. So let's get an idea of what I'm talking about by just looking at the files on my computer's hard drive. Here I have a folder called Cubase Projects, and here's one project called Project 1, and in that project folder is all of the media that pertains to that project. So we see these little things that have the red icons. These are the Cubase project files, and there's a few different ones that I've made, and I always have different versions of the projects as I'm working on them so that I can go back in time if I need to. But then we see some other folders. This is the all-important audio folder, and every time you make a new project inside of Cubase, it's going to make its own project audio folder. So if I click on the audio folder here, this is every single audio file that I recorded while I was working on this particular Cubase project. So what that means is that since I've created this project properly by giving it its own project folder and saving all the data inside of that one folder, it means that if I were to back up this folder or copy this folder somewhere else, then all of the data for that project will come along with it. The mistake that a lot of new users make is that they think that this little file right here that's only 1.8 megabytes big is the entire project. It is the project file, but it's not that collection of media that constitutes a Cubase project. This is just the file that ties together all these other things in these other folders. So let's talk about how to create a project properly. So I'm going to close this window and I'm going to go back into Cubase and let's start a brand new Cubase project by going under the file menu and choosing new project. When I get here, we can see six different tabs across this window in the Steinberg Hub. And you could choose from recent projects, or you could choose any of the templates in the recording or scoring tabs. But if you go over here to the More area, you could choose Empty, or you could just come down here to the window without anything selected and click the Create Empty button. But before you do that, Let's take a look at these all important options because there are two settings here. One is use the default location, which is going to save all of your individual project files and all of the media that constitute the project in one location. And there's advantages to that, but there's also some big disadvantages. So instead, I'm going to recommend that you always use Prompt for Project Location. Once you have that set, then you can come over here to Create Empty, and when you do, you're now able to make your own Cubase project folder. So I'm going to go to the location on my computer where I'm going to store my Cubase projects, and then I'm going to make a new project folder inside of that folder. So I'm going to click the new folder button right here, and I'm going to give this project a name, like my first Cubase project. That's going to create a project folder. So when I have that selected, I'm going to click the Open button, and the next thing that we see is the Project window, and we're going to learn a whole bunch about this, but now here's the really, really important thing. As soon as you see the Project window right here, you're going to want to save the Project file into the Project 
folder, and that's what ties all of the media together. So you'll notice that this is a Cubase Pro project, but it currently is untitled. So I'll need to give this a title, and to do so, I'm going to go under the File menu and choose Save or Save As. But when I open up the Save As window, you'll see that the folder that it has chosen to save this project file is actually the project folder you just made. So I'm going to give this the same name as the project folder. So this is going to be my first Cubase project. And then I'm going to give it my special little revision number convention that I use and then click the save button. So now when I go back out here to my finder or for you Windows folks, it would be Windows Explorer, I'm going to go into the folder, my Cubase projects folder that I had right here. And in the Cubase Projects folder, you can now see I have a new Cubase Project folder. And in that folder is the project file I just saved. But look at this. There's this audio folder. I didn't make that audio folder. And that's because Cubase made it for me. So now any of the recording that I do when I'm working on this Cubase project is going to be put into the corresponding audio folder in the project folder. So that's how you make a project folder that will contain all of the media that is part of the project. Because if you don't do that, you're going to end up with a hard drive full of audio files and projects and image files and maybe even track pictures that are just kind of thrown willy-nilly around your computer. And then it makes it really hard to find the data and it also makes it virtually impossible to back up or copy somewhere else. So again, this is a critical thing. If you make the Cubase projects the way I've just shown you, it will save you a lot of heartache and hassle in the future. So now that you know how to create a Cubase project properly, we're going to explore the interface in the next section.